Hi there. Welcome to this paper reading session. This paper is titled Fit Nets, Hints for Thin Deep Nets and it belongs to the research area of knowledge distillation. The paper was published in 2015 at ICLR conference. The paper is written by Adriana Romero, Nicholas Ballas, Samira Ibrahimi, Antoine Chashank, Carlo Gata, and Joshua Bengio. The paper has more than 1000 citations. Now before we look at the motivations behind the paper, I think it is important to understand what thin deep nets are. So very briefly and very quickly see what is a thin deep network. So this is a deep network. A network is deep if it has more than a couple of hidden layers. The network that I am showing right now on the screen has quite many layers. Now by this logic, this is even a deeper network. What you want to notice however is that even though this second network is deeper, it has less parameters because it has less number of neurons than the first network. Less number of neurons imply less number of parameters which in turn means less number of multiplications. There is another term that is used when you have large number of neurons in the network you call them wide networks. So by this definition, the network one is wide as well. So it's a wide and deep network, at least wider than the network two, because everything is relative. A network uh, one could be wider than network two, but it could be uh, thinner than the network three. So that's why I'm saying that everything is relative here. With this clarification done, let's explore the motivations behind this paper. The paper begins by making a case that often wide and deep models require a huge number of multiplications, which has high memory and computing demands. Because of this, even if the network is a top performing model in terms of accuracy, its application in real world gets limited. To solve this kind of an issue, we need to perform model compression which is also called knowledge distillation. That is, we transfer the knowledge from a cumbersome teacher model to a simpler student model which has less number of parameters. Now the main driver behind this paper is that so far knowledge distillation scheme has considered student networks that are either of the same size as, as the uh, teacher network in terms of the number of layers or they have even less number of layers than the teacher network. The authors bring attention to the fact that so far the depth of the student network has not been given its due attention and they believe that it is important to take advantage of this depth. So visually your teacher and student network are going to look like this. You can see that they have same number of layers but the student is thinner. So depth is a fundamental aspect of representation learning. What it means is that deeper networks learn more abstract and invariant representations. In other words, they have a higher capacity to explore and learn more sophisticated functions. This is a proven field. This, is, this has been verified and this is the reason uh, deep learning is important. And this is also the driving force when they suggest that a student may benefit from not limiting itself to same or lower number of layers than the teacher. However, there is an issue here. The deeper the model, more difficult the training is. There are issues like vanishing gradient that happen when you increase the number of layers. So the authors make a case for deeper students but quickly realize that doing so will invite some other problems as well, especially when we are making the student networks thinner. So these are the motivations behind this paper. First and foremost to point out that the depth for student network should be considered and then if increase in the if we increase the depth then we would have optimization problems. The paper wants to solve the problem of optimization of deeper but thinner student networks. Let's look at the prior art, art now. So the prior art can be seen from two perspectives. 
The first is from the mechanics of the softened, that is smoother output techniques proposed by Hinton. Now, they are not challenging in any way the method proposed by Hinton in his seminal paper on knowledge distillation, but they are simply pointing it out here that so far they have not considered the increase in the depth. And if we increase the depth, most likely we are going to learn more sophisticated function, but the depth of the student network is problematic. So this is the first perspective. So the second perspective for prior art is from the optimization problem side of the view that deep, deep networks suffer from. They mention many papers that have tried to tame the optimization problems. But what we should note here is that this paper and therefore all the cited papers are before the ResNet era. ResNet architecture played an instrumental role in solving the problems like vanishing gradient and therefore paved the way to create deeper net models. So to be frank, it is not really important for us to even try to understand the works cited here, the works, from, the works in the prior art. We will however discuss how this paper tried to circumvent the challenges of training deeper but thinner student networks in the next sections. On to the key insight section. So the first and main insight is what we have discussed already. That is it would be a good idea to have a deeper but thinner student network. There is no surprise here. Now in order to solve the associated optimization problems of deeper network the authors suggest that if we have a layer in, a, in the student network that learns to predict or mimic the output of a layer in the teacher network then we will potentially ease up the training related issues. The layer from the teacher whose output a student should learn to predict is called a hint layer. The layer from the student is called the guided layer. So this is shown in a figure on the left uh, by the way they call the student networks fit nets as well and hence the title of the paper however this results in a very interesting question about the selection of the layer to be treated as the hint layer in the teacher network and similarly which layer in the student network should be treated as the guided layer the authors gave an insight here saying that if the guided layer is closer to the output layer then it is likely to suffer over regularization why this particular arrangement leads to over, over regularization is not explained in the paper they then mention that they ended up choosing the middle layer of the student as the guided layer and same for the hint layer that is the middle layer of the teacher network most likely this decision of there is a result of their experiments So let's learn the details of their setup and experiment. So we have already established that the teacher network has the hint layer whose outputs the guided layer of the student has to learn. Both of these layers are in the middle of their respective networks. Here is a little visual to show the potential architectures of the networks. So this is a teacher network and as you can see I have pointed out that the middle layer is the hint layer. Then here is the guided layer of the student network you can see that student network is deeper but thinner than the teacher network the training of the student network is divided into two stages in the first stage the student is trained until the guided layer in order to do so guided so guided layer is to predict the outputs same as that of the hint layer one simple way to do is to minimize the loss between the prediction of these two layers. However, there is a problem here. As you can see that the guided layer is smaller than the hint layer in terms of number of neurons. So we cannot really compare the outputs of these two layers as they may not have, they would not have the same dimensions. So how to bring the output of the guided layer to the same dimension? What authors did is that they plugged in a small regressor on top of the guided layer. Uh, this way the output of the regressor is, is of the same dimension as that of the hint layer. And then they take the outputs of these two layers and feed it to a loss function. 
and then the goal becomes how to minimize the the loss there so this way they were able to uh, match the dimensions of the outputs from the hint layer of the teacher and the guided layer of the student time to look at the results of their experiments they use cifar 10 data set cifar 100 data set svhn data set for their experiments in this slide i am showing only the results for cifar 10 here as you can see in this table the teacher network that they use had five layers and that has around 9 million parameters then they trained four different student networks uh, fitnet 1 2 3 and 4 fitnet 1 and 2 had 11 layers fitnet 3 had 13 layers and fitnet 4 had 19 layers what is remarkable to note here is that the 11 layer network fitnet 1 had only 250000 parameters which is way lower than 9 million parameters of the teacher network and the accuracy loss is is little bit more than 1% Fitnet 4, which is a 19 layer network with 2.5 million parameters, actually performed better than the teacher network. Um, actually, Fitnet 2 and Fitnet 3 also performed better than the teacher network. So, these are great results. Now, some more observation from the experiments are the hint based mechanics did seem to ease the training process, that is work around the optimization challenges of a deeper network they also believe that it was the stage wise setup that they had to train until the guided layers uh, that was helpful because it was helping student getting a better initialization before the regular training was resumed and finally the hint training seems to help with regularization as well because they got even better results on the test data they do not provide any conceptual explanation why why they have a better regularization but it is it is evident from the results that they they obtained so this brings us to the end of this paper reading in conclusion i would say very interesting take it is funny that even though the paper is about knowledge distillation it quickly transformed into solving the optimization problem. The authors explained their work really well. Along with the theory, they conducted a decent set of experiments as well. Uh, that said, I would tend to think that because of ResNet style architectures, the optimization may not be a big issue nowadays as they experienced in 2015. Nevertheless, Another way of thinking about hint based training is to provide better initialization to the student networks. You could prepare the, the student network until some layers using this methodology and this can still be very helpful. I would give this paper 4 stars for the innovative thinking and the experimentation around the hint and guided layer concept. It would have been great to see some more numbers and results on what happens if you select different layers at different depth uh, but this is not the information that was provided in the paper like always if you have questions and comments please feel free to send them my way and i would try my best to provide required explanations with that i thank you for your time and patience hope you found this reading session helpful thank you bye bye